Today I'm back with another Company Spotlight video. We're taking a look at Balboa Game Company. Please stick around. I'm AZ Mountaineer and this is our channel Old School Rules where we celebrate the community of old school gamers and grognards like classic RPGs, miniatures, magazines, and everything that goes with it. On well, the Company Spotlight series, we take a look at the history and products of a particular company that was involved in the early era of Dungeons & Dragons. Today we're taking a look at Balboa Game Company. And this one is a lot of fun because the products we're going to look at today were produced by a group of gamers. Essentially their own rules for use with the Dungeons & Dragons game to expand and refine the concepts that were put out in the original rule set. The Balboa Game Company was based out of Long Beach, California. And they had their own, as I understand it, brick and mortar store where they sold games. And initially they did uh, traditional war games, box set war games, or published rule sets like TSR. And then later they did the, the, um, the rule set we're going to talk about with Dungeons and Dragons. I've given credit here to the folks who are mentioned as being partially responsible for the design of the Dungeons and Dragons rule sets, as well as the cover artist. Tim Finkus did all of them except for one, and the other one was done by Kathy Hill. And we'll talk a little bit more about the designers and the artists when we look at the particular products. The first thing we see from them is in 1973. It's a traditional uh, 20th century war game battle for the Philippines. Then they produce in 75 something called the Battle uh, for Tobruk. And then, in terms of what we're talking about, the reason I'm interested in it is this pr product from 1975. The Spartan was a war game magazine. This one was put out from California. And this particular one, issue number nine, I think the first 39 pages are their rules. And they subtitle it, How to Play Dungeons and Dragons Without Playing Dungeons and Dragons. And then they basically explain the, the rules that they use in their local uh, their local campaign, uh, which they call the Pasadena Playtest Group. So this one's this this is a, you know these these magazines these old magazines are kind of rare. Um, this one's kind of famous because it's the first appearance of these alternate rules. The company puts out another game called H Hour in 1976, and then I'll mention they have one more. Um, non-D&D game that comes out in the 80s. We'll mention that at the end. So this is the first product. It's uh, All these products are the same size. They're sort of um, the size of a TSR module, I guess you would say. This one is called Instant Bad Guys. It does not have a copyright date or anything else with a date um, on it in the product, but everybody seems to think that it was produced first in 1977. Uh, they credit this to the Pasadena Playtest group, and I'll mention later there's another group involved here as well. So it says this is their product published by Balboa Game Company. And all this is uh, here is a list of pre-rolled NPCs. And they're quick to say these are not supposed to become player characters. These are NPCs. And it is, um, well, it's not even... Uh, the pages aren't numbered, but it's, it's several pages long, and here's just a little bit easier to see. They have <clears throat> three choices, remember, right? Fighting man, magic user, cleric. A level, stats, they give some extra stats here. Um, size, basically they say three, you know, three small 18s are really sort of tall or big. Uh, agility, which they use in their rules for certain skill checks, essentially. Uh, hits, dies, um, their um, experience and also whether they have magic items and then they have some codes for things like um, you know swords armor shields miscellaneous weapons miscellaneous rings potions etc and then there's a table um, you would use the random table to generate those okay so this is the rule set and again this is essentially the same rule set that was published in the spartan number nine and again, here's the, the cover for that. And this one actually had different covers. And uh, from what I can tell and what others seem to comment, we're not aware of any differences within the text itself. It just seems like they had some different covers that they, um, coloration of the covers that they put out. And then, so I guess sort of pick which one you like the best, right? 
And then this one at the end, I have not seen, but I found this online, a cover that calls it the definitive edition. And it's, and it's actually all the things together. It has the com uh, all five products that they put out inside one cover. So I'm, I'm kind of keenly interested in finding that. That'd be the only thing I don't have that they put out that was D&D related. And um, so if we look at this one, here's the table of contents to give you some flavor of the type of rules that they cover. Uh, several of the things that are in the, um, even the Mold Bay rules or the, or the advanced D&D player's handbook that's coming out soon. And here's just an example, some of the charts they would have for experience points. They have their rules, their particular rules about combat. They have fumble tables, critical hit tables. And then they have this attack matrix, which is done on a D100 system rather than a um, Thaco with a, um, uh, you know, with a die 20 roll. And they've got the armor across the top and then the type of uh, weapon and then they give you a percentage and then those, those could be mod uh, modified based on your experience level and so forth. And then they have a similar thing for um, monster attacks, everything from small teeth, medium large teeth, hooves, claws, pincers, horns, hooves, stingers, tails, tentacles, you know, and then they have various percentages as well. And he, here's their fumble and some of their critical hit tables. And obviously they have spell tables and spell descriptions. They use a point system. Um, so the, the magic uh, system is also a little bit different. Then they came out with um, the Warlock's Tower, which is uh, a little thicker actually than the original rules, and it's a supplement of additional rules, and here is a table of contents for that. Um, all kinds of additional things, as they say, and more, more advanced rules for people that have already figured out the basic system. And then there was a, an adventure module called the Monkey God's Curse. This is a um, solo adventure like Tunnels and Trolls, find your own path, pick a path adventure where you read something and you say if you go left go to you know 14A, if you go right go to 17D, right? And so you go through there and, and look at the adventure for that. This is uh, what I have here is the second version of this and you look at the top right you see that logo has changed from the original logo um, and they've, they indicate that I don't have the original one that they've changed some of the artwork as well and then here's the final one this is the the Warlock Menagerie and it is also um, some additional rules that has a whole bunch of additional monsters you could use they put together and then some other um, add-on um, some some other add-on uh, rules for the game as well uh, and then I mentioned on the first page all the different people who are listed as being contributors it, I don't know if this is correct it's just an impression from the way things are written I mean I sort of sense that um, Nick Smith was the principal person responsible for making this a product and uh, Kenneth Dahl seemed to be the other person who's who, who seemed to have significant responsibility they do have one final product in 1986 uh, you get this um, more of a box war game product from them and so here's a summary of the products they put out. We've got these board games at the top, or war games, and then their RPG supplements or their D&D materials here at, at the bottom. Um, like I said, the Instant Bad Guys is not dated. Some people say it's from 1977 that it came out first, and so that it might be that that was the original date. But they, they weren't around for very long. It's sort of once AD&D seemed to settle in, um, we don't see them putting out any other products. Plus, they pretty much put out their entire rulebook system, I think, by them. Uh, so it's, it, I think it's always fascinating to uh, look at what other gaming groups were doing. As you know, in the early days, the rules were not particularly robust. And so having, having a more robust set of rules was really helpful for people who were trying to understand the game. One of the things I particularly enjoy, whether it's looking at these old products or I do all these fanzine videos, is to really get that flavor of what gamers were doing in, in the late 70s and early 80s before everyone sort of, you know, solidified around AD&D, which had a much more robust set of rules. You really had people being creative and filling in the gaps themselves in that early era when you see that in, in the products of the time. So these are great products. They're not horribly expensive. You can find most of them if you're patient and, and keep looking. And like I said, if you like this kind of thing, I definitely think buying these and reading through this sort of very early, probably the most robust set of alternative rules or 
um, supplemental rules that you could find from the from the late 70s. Um, really interesting stuff, well thought out, and uh, hopefully this gave you a chance to learn something more about the Balboa Game Company, one of many early era companies that were out there supplementing the hobby. That's it for this video. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're subscribed. Please tell your friends to give our channel a look if you think they'd enjoy the content. And until next time, my friends, keep rolling 20s. Thank you.